Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Avery Harper. A second case of that more contagious variant of COVID-19 from the UK has been found here at home. I'll have the latest coming up. And taking a live look outside with live cam, 43 degrees. It's chilly. And good morning. It is Thursday, December 31st, better known as New Year's Eve. And it's nasty out there. It feels good. Let's check like in. This? What? You what? like this? Yeah, I love this. I live for this. Ooh. Anytime I can take out a coat is a good sign okay. for me. Just for a few days, though. You got to take it out. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. Mike, Mike. I like that. Yes, I agree with you. Or if you can, as I um, send in the push alert there on your phone, if you can just stay in bed and throw the covers back over your head, great morning for that. But if you do have to venture out, you are going to run into some rain and then things are really going to start to change over out to the west later on today. Nothing really um, too awfully much showing up in this picture, but there's a lot showing up on radar as of right now. We've got the pockets of uh, eh, light, moderate, even a couple of heavier downpours here and there. And there are a few uh, lightning strikes that are being detected. A couple of thunderstorms well out there to the west. Also take note, there is a little bit of mixed precipitation in and around Rock Springs, uh, maybe a little bit of sleet thrown on in here and then some snow further out to the west in Valverde County. Now things are going to start to pick up later on today as a low, which is down there to the southwest, works its way across the area. That's that cold pocket of air. And so that's going to change things over to more uh, sleet and snow out in some of our western counties. A little closer into town there, maybe even a, a thunderstorm, a couple of lightning strikes here in town and then these pockets of rain. So this is going to continue on throughout most all of the day. Uh, rain probably won't start to end until about late afternoon, but we'll still have some snow in portions of the hill country, even going into the early evening hours. Here's the uh, latest as far as the advisories. Winter storm warning. The pink area is in effect. Now this includes western Kerr County, not all of Kerr County, western Kerr County, Real Edwards, Valverde County. This is getting up then out of our viewing area. Gillespie County has the advisory posted. You might see uh, in western portion, northern portions and western portions, Edwards and Valverde County, um, two, four inches of snow when it's all said and done. But that a lot of it's going to start to pick up again later on today. Temperatures, boy, a whole different story than yesterday. They're down about Oh gosh, 20 degrees. When that front moved through, things dropped down 10, 15 degrees right as soon as that moved through yesterday. So we got 30s and 40s, no freezing temperatures on the map right now, but we've got a pretty good breeze out there and so wind chill temperatures. Feels like 25 lost maples, 34 at the airport, 29 is the wind chill right now at Bernie Stage. That's going to be the situation all day long. It's going to be interesting to see what this number does with Mountain Cedar after that uh, front going on through here, but yesterday's count 15, almost 16,000, and throughout the day, temperatures basically are not going to be moving. We may actually drop down a little bit this morning and then barely come back up and rain throughout most of the day. So again, bundle up and then again, snow well out to the west. Talk about the first of the year because it's going to look pretty. It's going to be cold, though. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your New Year's Eve. All right. In the city limits, things are looking good. A lot of green on the screen. No construction, no accidents. But my buddy Ismael, a trans guy, did want to warn you. There is ice on the roadway going west up I-10 past Bernie towards Kerrville right now. There's a 10-mile back up there to a mile marker 122. Just keep this in mind if you're heading in this direction. Be very careful on the ice two hands in that steering wheel. All right, let's take a look outside of the trans guide 281 at 410 looking really good right now. Pretty much tells a picture of all the city of San Antonio. Things are looking good. Dave Alicia back to you. Yeah, police do this morning. Police say a woman recovering after she had to be rescued from her vehicle following a crash. It happened around 1130 last night in the 4400 block of Rogers Road near Highway 151 on the west side. Police say the woman was driving a small SUV when she lost control, rolled over, and then was trapped inside. Firefighters were able to cut her out of the vehicle. She was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. This morning, new details about that second confirmed case of the UK coronavirus variant discovered here at home. ABC's Avery Harper has more on the new CDC warning on how high that death toll, death toll could go this time just next month. The second confirmed case of the more contagious variant of COVID-19 has been found in Southern California's San Diego County. 
Health officials there trying to determine where the 30-year-old patient got it and how many more people could be infected. Because there is no travel history, uh, we believe this is not an isolated case. The first confirmed case discovered in Colorado and another suspected one found in members of the National Guard deployed to help a nursing home amid an outbreak of the coronavirus. We do not have evidence that the variant virus is circulating in that facility, um, but testing is ongoing. Health experts say the mutation isn't more deadly and vaccines should still be effective against it. But the pace of vaccinations is still far behind expectations. That number is lower than what we hoped for. The Trump administration pledged 20 million vaccinations by the end of the year. So far, only 14 million have been distributed and only two and a half million doses have been administered. The president blaming the states for the slow rollout, tweeting that they need to, quote, get moving. Los Angeles County marking more than 10,000 COVID-related deaths. This has been the toughest year of our city's history. The National Guard sending help for the coroner's office and funeral homes struggling to keep up with the influx of bodies. I have to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. And that's a very difficult thing to tell people. There are fears that the death toll will only worsen as we enter the new year. The CDC is predicting that deaths could reach 424,000 by January 23rd. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. And here's a look at the coronavirus numbers for Bear County. In his latest report, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg announced 1,323 new cases and 17 new deaths. In addition, 1,136 people are in local hospitals with 331 in the ICU and 165 on ventilators. It is now 436 in a chilly, wet, nasty 43 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a woman in New York shares her side of the story after she was accused of falsely blaming a teenage boy for stealing her iPhone. And also coming up next, it was a rough night for the Spurs. They took on LeBron James and the Lakers, but it was a historic night for the Spurs and the NBA as well. We've got that explanation coming up. And live cam shot outside. Look at that. Look at those clouds. Doesn't look that bad right now. But, but it, it feels. Yeah, it feels, it feels, yeah. Really? It feels like winter. It's 43, it's cold, it's windy, it's wet. It's all that stuff. Mike's got your forecast coming up. It's going to be a doozy. In your morning headlines, President Trump has been briefed that China sought to pay forces to attack U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. That's according to a senior administration official. The scenario is similar to reports earlier this year that Russia offered Afghan militants money to kill U.S. forces in Afghanistan. President Trump has yet to publicly call out Russia on the issue. While it's not clear if President-elect Joe Biden has seen the intelligence, he has promised to hold to account anyone endangering U.S. troops. America's most prolific serial killer is dead. 80-year-old Samuel Little died at a hospital yesterday. Little was serving a three-life sentence in California for the deaths of three women in the late 1980s. But in 2018, he confessed to 93 murders around the country. The killings took place between 1970 and 2005. Little targeted women from vulnerable groups, killing those involved in prostitution or suffering from drug addiction. And the Census Bureau will miss today's deadline to produce the population count used to divide seats in Congress between the states. Now, the key question remains whether the Census Bureau and Commerce Department will present the tally to President Trump prior to his departure from office on January 20th. If the numbers are completed during the Trump presidency, he may attempt to exclude some undocumented immigrants for the division of House seats. The Supreme Court recently overturned rulings that would have blocked that policy. Oh, that situation gives way to history last night for the Spurs. We'll get to that in just a second, but let's get to the highlights. LeBron James did get to suit up eh, like he wasn't going to play last night, even though he was listed <laughs> with a sprained ankle in the first of three games in the next five days against the Spurs. James helped put the Lakers up by 13 in the second. Meanwhile, right before halftime, after DeMar DeRozan got mugged on a play, no foul call, Coach Pop is going to go off and he's going to end up getting ejected. There's LeBron James with a little hook. And here's DeMar. Watch this. Eh, knocked all over the floor. Look at Pop jumping off the bench, yelling and screaming, as Pop is prone to do on a bad foul call. And two technicals. And thanks for showing up, Pop. 
he's gone. <laughs> so guess what? A big moment. History. Becky Hammond acting as head coach for the Spurs, a first in NBA history and in all North American sports. She led the team as DeJounte Murray scored a career-high 29 points, kept the Spurs close in the fourth. Rosen contributed to 23 as well, but the Lakers were able to pull away and win it 121 to 107. But after the game, Becky was asked about that historic moment last night. It's a big deal. Um, it's a su substantial moment. Um, you know, I've, I've been a part of this organization. I, I got traded here when, in 2007. So I've been in San Antonio, part of the Spurs and sports organization with the stars and everything for, you know, 13 years. So I have a lot of time invested. Um, and they have a lot of time invested in me um, and, and building me and getting me better. Um, honestly, in the moment, I was just trying to win the game. I, I, I say this a lot, but I try not to think about the huge picture and the huge aspect of it because it can get overwhelming. Um, it, it's my job to go in there and be focused for those guys and make sure that I'm helping them uh, do the things that will help us win. Um, I really have not had time to reflect. I haven't looked at my phone, so I have no idea what's going on outside of, of uh, AT&T Center tonight. Oh, you know her phone was blown up. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations to her and that opportunity. And, and the best thing about it, her focus was on winning. She knows it's history, but it's winning. So let's see if she can win again if she gets another opportunity. You know she's going to get another chance because you know Pop's going to get thrown out of another game at some point. So <laughs> Friday, 7 o'clock, tomorrow night, New Year's night. The Spurs and the Lakers, again, Lakers staying in town because it's that you know weird thing with the NBA this year. They're trying to keep teams from traveling so much. So the Lakers will play a back-to-back -back with the Spurs. 7 o'clock, tip-off AT&T Center. Maybe they can get that win back tomorrow. Maybe, maybe. All right, time and temperature right now, 444, 43 degrees. Chili. Grab, grab your coat. Grab your coat. You're going to need it. Coming up next, a woman in New York is sharing her story after she is accused of blaming a teen for stealing her phone. And the woman who falsely accused a teenage boy of stealing her phone in a New York City hotel is speaking out. ABC's Adrian Bankert has more in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the family of Keon Harold Jr. is speaking out against claims from the woman seen on video accusing the 14-year-old of theft. This is my phone. Show me. No. You don't have to explain nothing to her. It's face off. That's mine. Literally, you can get it back. Are you kidding me? You feel like there's only one iPhone made in the world? In this newly released surveillance video, you can see the woman wrestle with Keon Jr. in the lobby, tackling him to the ground. Her phone was brought to her in an Uber. There's nothing to say to her, but look at the video. On Wednesday, police say following a review of the video at the Arlo Hotel in downtown Manhattan, they're considering additional possible charges for the unnamed woman, including assault, grand larceny, and attempted robbery. And coming up at 7 a.m., the new details from the unreleased phone interview, the unnamed woman speaking out for the first time. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrian Bankert, ABC News. All right, good news, bad news. It is New Year's Eve, so maybe there's not a whole lot of people on the road because the bad news is it's nasty out there on the roads. In your opinion. It's windy. On the roads, it's, yeah. What? Mike? No. Yeah. Well, Officer? Uh, Alicia, it, it is. It is right now. If you look at the cameras here when I show the trans guide, it's starting to get real slick here. Like Mike's going to tell you, roads are getting a little dangerous out here. So please be careful when you are driving. Make sure you wear that seatbelt because there is some uh, wetness to the roads. Uh, but first, let's get to this hazard on the roadway ice. Um, Ishmael trans guide says right now uh, traffic's backed up 10 miles going up to the hill country right now due to these icy conditions there. Please be careful if you're heading westbound I-10 towards Bernie, uh, past Bernie towards Kerrville in that area. Uh, roadways can be very dangerous. All right, here in San Antonio, 35 and Randolph Park, Park and Ride looking really good right now, but there's 10 at the Y. Look at that. Roadways are getting very slick. Just like I said, please be very careful out there. 1604 Mendera. That looks pretty good. No traffic there as well. All right, let's start. I'm, I'm checking to see how windy it really is. It, it is pretty windy out there, and we do have some pretty good wind chills to deal yeah. with. And uh, what's falling right now in and around town is uh, just in the form, <clears throat> excuse me, of rain and as you can see temperatures are up all around uh, here in town. Now these are wind chill readings when you factor in those those winds. Now this has nothing to do. This will not make it freeze. 
any quicker. This is what it feels like to your body. So yeah, bundle up 27 Bernie stage 27 in Kerrville. Here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And uh, we've got everything again falling in the form of rain, maybe a couple of lightning strikes here and there. And we've got a couple of heavier pockets of rain moving on through. And this is going to be the situation throughout most of the day. We will continue to have some of this rain picked up a uh, pretty good amounts of one quick shower moved through the airport yesterday, just over a tenth of an inch all told about a quarter of an inch of rain out at the airport. And we can expect expect more than that later on today. Now you move out into portions of the hill country and as temperatures it's flirting with freezing out here and also notice how some of this is falling in the form of a little bit of uh, sleet as well as some snow out here. Now this is going to start to pick up later on today and the reason why we're not seeing it as of yet is because the cold cold pocket of air is this low right here just uh, just to the southwest and west of the uh, the Big Bend area and this is going to work its way basically up to the north to northeast and as that works its way across here that is what is going to then enhance the uh, wintry precipitation so here's what it looks like later on this morning we'll have maybe a couple little spots uh, say in western gillespie county in kerr county and then more of this notice how it starts to pick up out there edwards and valverde counties going into the afternoon hours as well as going into the evening and this is going to at least according to a couple of the computer models there and it looks like as this low continues to work its way up to the north it's it's going to continue with the chance for some snow out here in western and northern portions of the uh, hill country. Then by midnight, stroke of midnight in 2021, pretty much everything's going to be on out of here. We will start to clear out. Now, we won't get as cold as we could get because we are going to be seeing some uh, we are going to have winds that are still going to stay strong overnight, so that'll hold temperatures up, but we'll still have wind chills to deal with around here by tomorrow morning. So again, the snowfall potential, you know, maybe a little bit in portions of uh, eastern Kerr County in parts of uh, Bandera, some I call it kind of chunky rain, maybe a little sleet mixed in, but then you go out into Edwards and uh, Valverde counties. Two to five inches is going to be possible out there in northwestern portions of the hill country. And again, that's going to start to pick up as the day rolls on. So most everything right now out there is in and in around the metropolitan area is falling in the form of rain. 42 degrees at noon today and then a high of only 44. So basically temperatures aren't going to be going anywhere and snow is going to pick up well out there to the northwest later on today. Then tomorrow, actually tonight, we start to clear on out. I think we stay at 34 degrees here in town. Definitely a freeze in the hill country and then get up to 55 tomorrow afternoon freezing starting off Saturday and good looking start to the year and then it's going to start to uh, warm up a little bit and temperatures will be about uh, seven, eight degrees above normal by Tuesday and Wednesday. But if you're out in the hill country, that's where you really have to watch uh, slick spots on the roads with some of that uh, sleet as well as some snow. All right, Mike, thank you. Mm -hmm. 452, 43 degrees. And up next, a preview of the entertainers you'll see on tonight's New Year's Eve celebration as Americans say good riddance to 2020. And as we head to break, lotto numbers for you. Pick three, one, four, two. And the fireball is four. And then the daily four is four, eight, seven, five. Fireball is four. Cash five, 10, 11, 12, 20, 34. And lotto Texas, one, four, 13, 16, 21, 28. Add Powerball. 3, 43, 45, 61, 65. Powerball is 14. Power play is 2. Good luck. We'll be back. Welcome back. 456. ABC's New Year's Rock and Eve is going to be a little different this year, as you would expect. Plus, a Gilligan's Island actress is being remembered this morning. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The most watched New Year's celebration will look a little different this year because of the pandemic. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest will take place in Times Square as usual, but Seacrest tells us... We will not pack in a million plus people, obviously, but we will have the performances like we always do. We will have the stage built like we always have, and I think it's important that we do bring in um, fun and we do bring in this theme of celebration and this theme of moving forward and moving on from, from this year. Among those performers, Jennifer Lopez, even an appearance by President-elect Joe Biden. That's tonight on ABC. Flowers. Many remembering actress Don Wells, best known for playing Marianne on Gilligan's Island, who died Wednesday from complications due to COVID-19. Her on-screen best friend, Tina Louise, who played Ginger on the show, said in a statement, quote, I hope that people will remember her the way that I do. 
always with a smile on her face. Tina Louise is now the last surviving member of the Gilligan's Island main cast. Don Wells was 82. And happy birthday this last day of 2020 to a couple of Oscar-winning sirs. Sir Anthony Hopkins is 83, while Sir Ben Kingsley is 77. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is now 457, 42 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, as stimulus payments arrive in Americans' bank accounts, the battle over a bigger payout is being waged in Washington. Plus, our Amazon customers will soon be able to access a whole new world of audio content. That's ahead on Tech Bite. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A high-speed chase ends with the driver in police custody. More details just ahead. And the battle over more stimulus money continues in Washington as many Americans begin to see payments in their checking accounts. And outside with live cam, we knew it was coming and it's here. Cold temperatures, wet, windy, and some problems out west of San Antonio. We got that for you coming up. Good morning. It is Thursday, December 31st. It is New Year's Eve. Goodbye 2020. Ooh, Thanks for close. being with us this morning. Almost just right there. Yeah, rigging in the new year with some colder temperatures. So it feels like New Year's, Mike. Yeah, it'll be really cold uh, by tomorrow morning. It's darn cold out there right now, and it's uh, it's windy. We've got winds out of the north at about 14, gusting as well. Temperature is only 42 degrees, and uh, we do have some rain all around the area, and thermometers really aren't going to be going anywhere today. So what you're seeing right now is basically what you're going to get, and out to the west actually uh, dropped down a little bit later on today. The aquifer yesterday's reading did uh, no, not change, and then as far as the allergens, Mountain Cedar really went up from the previous day's reading, almost 16,000. It'll be interesting to see what today's count is at because of that front that moved through late yesterday to shake up those trees. All right, this is what it looks like on radar right now. And a lot of rain scattered around the area, and this will continue to be the case throughout the rest of today. I want to start off going out in toward the hill country. And as you can see, there are even a couple little specks maybe in western uh, Kerr County, a little bit of sleet mixed in there, and then even some snow out toward uh, western portions or northern portions of Edwards County and Valverde County, a little bit of snow falling out there, and then more of this will continue to develop as the day rolls on. Going out on 10, you just want to watch it because Nick's going to touch on this a little bit more, but uh, there may have been a couple of uh, slick spots and some icy patches in the overnight hours. Now, even though temperatures are above freezing out there right now, could still be a couple little uh, slippery spots out on I-10 heading out toward Kerrville. Like I said, Nick's going to have more on that. We've got more of these showers that are moving on through here. Even a couple of thunderstorms are being picked up on radar as of right now, especially out to the west, and that'll be the, the situation throughout at least the morning hours. So we have the winter storm warning in effect. This is all in effect up until the stroke of midnight. And the winter storm warning is the pink shade that does include western Kerr County, Real, Edwards, and Valverde counties. Most of the snow is going to be in northern uh, Edwards and Valverde County. Again, as that picks up later on today, then the uh, purple shade there in Gillespie County, that is a winter weather advisory and maybe a little bit of mixed precipitation up there. So 42 here in town right now, 37 going up I-10, 36 at Kerrville. So, you know, that means in some of those outlying areas, maybe along the highway somewhere, it could be touching 32 degrees. So that's why there could be a couple of those slick spots on the roads. Wind, yeah, it is breezy out there, as I mentioned. So we've got wind chill temperatures right now in the uh, mid to lower 30s and even some 20s heading out in toward the hill country. So as far as the weather story today, rain, windy, some snow out to the west, and then that snow out to the west is going to start to pick up as this pocket of cold air moves over our western counties. It's going to remain windy and we'll still keep some rain around throughout the, the rest of the afternoon. Then uh, by about dinner time, early evening, the rain is going to start to end. Then later on this evening, the snow will start to end. It's going to be sticking around a little bit longer out there to the west. We're going to clear out overnight. Beautiful to start off 2020 and chilly. Details for the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Salise. Thanks, Mike. All right, right now the city limits, things are slick out there, so please be careful when driving. But like we're going to get to here, this is going west on I-10, past Bernie, past Comfort, into Kerrville. Looks like uh, Trans Guy said there's still some ice on the roadway there. Just be careful driving. There was a 10-mile uh, traffic buildup. Um, we'll keep you updated on this when we can. But if you are headed that way, west on I-10, please be careful. All right, let's 
take a look at some drive times here. Let's see what we got. All right, if you're southbound on I-35 from the city of New Braunfels to the downtown city limits to San Antonio, it's a 26 minute ride. And if you're coming westbound from the city of Seguin to downtown, 31 minutes, really good times there. All right, taking a look at Trans Guide right now. Here we go, 281 at San Pedro. You can see the reflection off those headlights. Things are very slick right now on the roadways. Like I said, please be careful and wear that seatbelt. Dave, Alicia, back to you. Officer Solis, thank you. A driver is in custody after police say he sent officers on a high speed chase overnight. It happened in Castle Hills at Loop 410 near I 10 in Hubner just after midnight. Castle Hills police were trying to stop the reckless driver when that suspect took off. Police say the suspect reached speeds over 120 miles per hour before he finally pulled over. Police say the driver was detained for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. You saw it there. They say he also had an open container in the vehicle. Road construction has taken a bit of a break during the holiday period, but it will soon resume. Our Samuel King joins us live now. And Samuel, there are some projects and changes to look out for in the new year. Oh, definitely a lot of things to watch out for. It's going to get pretty busy here pretty quickly, despite the break that we're seeing now. And while some projects are scheduled to be completed, others are just starting up. And one is going to be on the north side. The 281 project is making some major progress here at uh, the on ramps at 1604 and 281. They're expected to fully open uh, next month and the next set of our HOV lanes in the region are expected to open between Stone Oak and 1604 later in the year, while the lanes between Stone Oak and Borgfeld are projected for 2022. And as I mentioned, the on ramps they are going to be open too. So you know this project has been going on uh, for a while. And while that project is making progress, another one is just beginning. McCullough Avenue between Oblate and Shannon Lee will be closed for a few months. Uh, actually, that's uh, the wrong graphic there. The bridge will be closed to repairs. Uh, to, for storm drains in the area. It's all part of a bond project to reduce flooding in the area. We'll get the correct graphic for you coming up uh, at six o'clock, as well as more on the detours that will cause for via buses in the area. And plus, uh, they're going to be having some major service changes too, or not major, but some to adjust for social distancing. We'll have much more on that coming up. David, Alicia. All right, Samuel, thank you very much. Millions of Americans will see their $600 COVID stimulus payments show up in their bank accounts over the next week as the Treasury sends out cash at an unprecedented speed. But President Trump's continued call for $2,000 stimulus checks has led to a shocking alignment with Democrats. CNN's Nadia Romero has the latest on the political drama in Washington. As Americans across the country began to see $600 COVID stimulus payments show up in their bank accounts, President Trump continues to press for a bigger payout, tweeting $2,000 ASAP, his demand leading to an unlikely alliance with Democrats. For once, Democrats agree with something on President Trump's Twitter feed. But Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is not buying in. Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer are trying to pull a fast one on the president and the American people. McConnell effectively slamming the door Wednesday against the check increase by bundling the measure with two of President Trump's other demands, repealing online liability protections and investigating voter fraud, creating a, quote, poison pill that could never pass. To ensure the president was comfortable signing the bill into law, the Senate committed to beginning one process that would combine three of the president's priorities. Democrats are crying foul. The Senate deserves the opportunity for an up or down vote on increasing the individual payments to the American people. In an effort to fight back, Senator Bernie Sanders is threatening to delay the vote to override the president's veto of the defense spending bill. But McConnell remains unmoved. The Senate will stay on this important bill until we complete it one way or another. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Congress has extended the deadline for CARES Act funds to be spent to the December 30th of next year. Bear County made $9 million available to 26 cities and municipalities. Only about $4 million were spent, according to Judge Nelson Wolf, though. The rest of the funds were reallocated to support programs and businesses during the pandemic. Some towns didn't use one cent of the money allotted to them. Others only spent a little bit of it. Mayor Al Suarez says Converse spent more than 90% of their funds. They purchased three ambulances, renovated council chambers to meet social distancing guidelines, and bought cleaning equipment. He says the process to coordinate the grant application and deadline was not easy. A lot of times, it's a lot of work. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. Getting these three uh, ambulances, if you would only to see what happened behind the scenes, 
it couldn't have been done if it wasn't for the team or the team effort. St. Hedwig, Von Army, and Gray Forest didn't use any of their federal funds allotted. One mayor told us they didn't have the upfront money needed to make large purchases that would have been later reimbursed by the county grant. Others said they lacked the staff needed to coordinate the deadlines. Time right now, 509, a little bit more chilly, 42 degrees. Temperature yeah. drops as we got here, didn't it? Yeah, yes. going down. All right, still ahead on GMSA, Amazon looking to expand its catalog of original audio content for customers. We'll tell you how they're going to do that coming up. Important news if you're planning to drink as you ring in the new year. Just ahead, how to help a hangover. And outside with live cam, mentioned temperature kind of going down a little bit. Started at 43 this morning. Now it's down to 42. Still wet. It's still windy. Mike's telling us it's going to be a cold New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. So get ready. The fireplaces are going to be cranked up tonight for sure. He's coming up next. Of course, it is New Year's Eve, so it is a good time to remind you that too much fun tonight can lead to a painful day tomorrow. Hangovers mm -hmm. can, of course, cause vomiting, headaches, nausea, dehydration, and more. I don't know, but there are some ways to help ease the discomfort. Erica Hernandez has a story. Tis the season for a little champagne, but the morning after can be anything but fun. Headache. Throwing up, nausea, yeah. And just lethargic, to, don't want to do anything. Science says to hydrate with water and electric light supplement. Consuming around four alcoholic drinks can eliminate up to 33 ounces of water from your body. Eating a good breakfast can also normalize your blood sugar levels, which can lessen your discomfort. One study found red ginseng reduced blood alcohol levels and hangover severity. Prickly pear extract decreased symptoms and cut the risk of hangover severity in half. And there's some evidence that ginger combined with brown sugar and tangerine extract could improve symptoms. But the one thing not to do? Not drink any water or eat anything. Another trick to skip is drinking during a hangover. It can be dangerous. Your vital organs, like your liver, need time to repair. Erica Fernandez, Case at 12 News. You know how you solve the hangover problem? You don't drink that much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you sleep it off. Yeah, but it's 2020, so good luck with that. <laughs> Still ahead, more details on how Amazon is expanding its catalog of original audio content. Plus, a designer has come pretty close to create a device that makes him into something of a superhero. We'll explain. My new normal, fewer asthma attacks. Less oral steroids. Taking my treatment at home. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala at home. Find your new normal with Nucala. Hi, ya, flu, ronic acid. There's a reason one serum is sold every minute. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum with our highest concentration of hyaluronic acid visibly replumps skin and reduces wrinkles. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum from L'Oreal. Each Febreze Car Vent Clip gives you up to 30 days of fresh air so you can have open window freshness even with all the windows up. Enjoy fresh anytime with Febreze. La, 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 la. And welcome back, 18 minutes after 5 o'clock. Ticketmaster will pay a big fine to resolve fraud and hacking charges. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has the details and more in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Ticketmaster settles a years-long legal battle. It's going to pay a $10 million fine for hacking into a competitor's computer system with the help of a former employee of that company. Ticketmaster fired two people involved in the case in 2017. Amazon is buying the podcasting startup Wandery for an undisclosed amount. The move is seen as an attempt to better compete in the podcasting market with Apple and Spotify. Wandery counts over 10 million unique listeners per month. And finally, a designer has built his own grappling hook gun that would make any superhero jealous. It fits on one arm, uses carbon dioxide cartridges to shoot the hook, and has a 10,000 watt motor to pull him up in the air. He says his next project is a web shooter like Spider-Man's. Sign me up for that one. And those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> 
I need one of those to get across San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, pretty interesting. <laughs> Speaking of getting across San Antonio, slick roads, but no problems so far, huh? Yeah, Dave, definitely slick roads out there, so please be careful. But no accidents to report. That's always the good news. And no construction, so it's always good, too. But this, we have this. This hazard on the roadway. It's going westbound I-10, past Bernie, a little bit past Comfort, going in towards Kerrville. Uh, Transguide still has those caution signs for possible ice on the roadway. Please be careful when heading in that direction. All right, 410 at Babcock right now, though, flowing real smoothly. Doesn't look too wet there on that part of the roadway. 281 at 410, still looking good. 1604 at Bandera and 35 at Randolph Park and Ride. Low and smooth as well. Looks good. Couldn't ask for a better morning, and it's chilly. I don't think, yeah, I mean, if, you, if it's one of those mornings, if you can stay in bed, hey, more power to you. So, <laughs> Man, and, I'm jealous. And pretty much all day long, you know, put a fire in the fireplace, extra blanket, and uh, some thick socks, and you're all set because it's cold and it's just going to stay like it is right now. So, this picture, uh, not really anything showing up, but there's a lot showing up on radar right now. We've got uh, some of these showers that are moving through town, and then notice how there are a couple of uh, thunderstorms mixed in as well. And then you go further out to the west, and that's where some of this uh, mixes in. First of all, here in town, another batch of rain is moving on through the area, sliding up to the north, some moderate uh, showers as well. Then we go out here, and notice how in uh, northern parts of Real County. Thunderstorm overhead. Yep, right wow. now. We're, just as I speak, we get some uh, thunder right now. And uh, there in northern portions of Real County, looks like a little bit of pink mixed in. Same thing in western Kerr County. And this is what uh, Nick was talking about out here, that right along I-10, maybe with temperatures just flirting right around freezing out there, uh, Reporting at the uh, reporting station there in Kerrville is 36, but again, in some of the outlying areas, that's just one thermometer, so it may be very close to freezing, and so that's why you got to watch it as you're heading out I-10 for maybe a little bit of icing, especially on a, an elevated surface. And then you go out toward Rock Springs. We do have uh, 32 degrees out there as well as uh, further out to the northwest. So here's the computer model. And as the day rolls on, we will start to see more of the snow and everything kind of changing over to wintry precipitation out there in western parts of the hill country. And you can see from, say, western uh, Kerr County in parts of Kerr County and then further on out to the west. And that will continue to work its way up to the north. And then by midnight, everything's going to start to move on out. We will be clearing out a little bit, uh, even up going up uh, 35 in toward Austin could have a little bit late tonight. Some mixed precipitation well up uh, north of our viewing area. Now, as far as who's going to be getting snow, there could be just a little bit of uh, some mix, you know, a little bit of sleep mixed in and then going further out to the northwest and it's primarily northern parts of Edwards County and Valverde County where you would see the most and that could be about two to uh, five inches out there. And of course, the winter storm warning is in effect up until midnight for western Kerr County. It does include Real, Edwards, and Valverde. And then this is basically the northern edge of our viewing area. And there is that uh, advisory for parts of Gillespie County. And as far as rainfall from here through the end of this rain event, which is going to be here in town about, uh, say, dinner time just after that early evening hours, another uh, half inch, maybe inch of rain. We've already picked up a quarter of an inch of rain yesterday around here. So anything is really going to be helping out a lot more, but it's just going to stay very cold as well throughout the day. So temperatures will pretty much stay steady or out to the west drop down a little bit. 42 here in town at noon with rain and the snow is going to be developing as the day rolls on out there to the west and we'll stay at about 44 here in town still staying windy as well. So wind chill temperatures are definitely going to be something to uh, deal with. And then as we clear out overnight tonight, we're going to be down close to freezing, obviously colder in the hill country. It's still going to be windy. So the wind chills uh, overnight are going to well, the wind's going to help to keep temperatures up a little bit, but it'll feel obviously colder than that. And then we get down to freezing Saturday morning. Beautiful weekend, maybe a couple of showers by the middle of next week. So, but heading out out to the west, and especially as the day rolls on, you want to watch it if you are heading out to the west in the hill country. Just found out how much power you have. You raise your hand, so a thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was David Sears. Let me raise two hands and get the lottery numbers for tomorrow night. So. <laughs> that would be nice. Go. I'm going to stay right here while you do that. <laughs> it's 524 and 42 degrees. Still ahead in our in your morning spotlight, a Gilligan's Island actress is being remembered. Plus, new Jeopardy episodes with late Alex Trebek are set to premiere in the new year. Welcome back. It is 527. Jeopardy fans are going to get to say one last goodbye to the late Alex Trebek. CNN's Douglas Hyde explains the Hollywood Minute. It's 
Gilligan Skipper and the professor they've gone island happy. Oh, Gilligan's Island star Don Wells has died of complications from COVID-19. The Reno, Nevada native played Marianne in the classic sitcom and appeared in other 60s shows like Bonanza and Maverick. She was 82. Keep the faith and we'll win. We'll get it done. Jeopardy fans will be kicking off the new year with an old friend, Alex Trebek. The final week of episodes featuring the late host begin airing January 4th. The upcoming episodes were taped in late October, just before Trebek's death from pancreatic cancer. No permanent replacement has been announced yet. In the meantime, a series of guest hosts will take over, beginning with popular contestant Ken Jennings on January 11th. And it turns out all people want this season are Christmas tunes. A record 39 holiday songs dominated this week's Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. And leading the way at number one is Mariah Carey's 1994 classic, All I Want for Christmas is You. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. It is now 528 and 42 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on a new strain of coronavirus and how effective the new vaccine are against it. Plus, you may soon have to provide proof of a negative COVID test if you plan on flying to your destination. And if you're a fan of Little Debbie Oatmeal Cream Pies, we'll tell you about a new cereal you can get soon. And good morning. If your alarm is just going off, it's 531. It's 42 degrees, and it's one of those mornings where you might want to just smack that thing and roll back over. And it's New Year's Eve. Yeah, which I mean, you want to really smack that thing and roll back over. No, yeah. people are excited and get it over with. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. But wait till you uh, lift up the window shade and look outside. Yeah, well, I mean, when you walk outside, because it's just cold and wet out there, and it's going to stay this way all day long. Now, we do have, remember yesterday, there were the uh, winter storm watches. Now, that's been up to winter storm warning. This includes Western Kerr County, Real, Edwards, and Valverde County. And then we're getting up out north of our viewing area and then the advisory is in effect for parts of Gillespie County. So again, northern fringes of our area are under the uh winter storm warning that's in effect up until midnight. Here's what it looks like on radar and there's a lot of rain out there. Obviously some folks aren't seeing it constantly, but we continue to see these batches of rain moving on through and out in the hill country. As you can see some of this pink thrown on in here. So you've got rain, you've got a couple of thunderstorms, and then there's also a little bit of sleet mixing in in western portions of Kerr County. And if you go out I 10 right in there and uh, Officer Solis is going to be talking more about this, but there are a couple of patches where it may be a little bit icy on I-10 or at least kind of extra slippery out there. So some of this mixed precipitation and some of it's changing over to snow and more is going to be developing out there to the west later on today as this cold pocket of air, this low slides right across uh, western parts of our area. So that's going to enhance the snow here in town. A lot of heavy rain. We've got a couple of lightning strikes as well, so don't be surprised if you hear a couple of uh, claps of thunder if we've heard around here this morning. And temperatures in and around the metropolitan area are above freezing. They are going to stay above freezing, but you go out toward the hill country. You got Lost Maples 33, Kerrville at 36, but that's just that one thermometer. So some of the outlying areas could actually be right around freezing. So that's going to be the, the real kind of close call situation. The further out west you go, and uh, Rock Springs right now is reporting 32 degrees right at freezing. Good breeze out there this morning, or good wind, I should say, because it's cold. Wind chill 33, and it's sort of that damp chill that sneaks right down the back of your neck. Wind chill 28 in Kerrville, 24 in Lost Maples. If you can just put the blanket over your head this morning, that's the best advice. Temperatures. Pardon the grammar, ain't going anywhere today. We're going to stay cold and it's going to stay wet. And then finally, by early evening, that rain will start to taper off. We'll still have a little bit of snow out to the west, and then we're going to be clearing out overnight tonight. Good looking weekend. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Thanks, Mike. Well, right now you can see a lot of green on the screen here. No heavy pockets of traffic yet, so that's good. Traffic is still flowing, but the roadways are slick, so please be careful when driving out on the road. All right, here we go. Still dealing with this. This is what Mike was talking about. 
talking about. If you're westbound I-10 right now, past Bernie, going towards Comfort and Kerrville, uh, Transguide still has a caution for ice on the roadway. Please be careful when driving in this direction as the uh, weather is still pretty bad up there in the hill country. Okay, let's take a look at some drive times here. If you're on 1604 westbound or uh, from I-35 all the way to Bandera, it's only a 12 minute ride. And if you're on 1604 eastbound from Bandera all the way to 35, it's an 11 minute ride. Really good times there. And let's take a look outside of the Transguide right now. Haven't confirmed this is an accident yet, but something is going on right now on the southbound lanes of 410 at Caleba Road. Try to get more information on this when I can, but until then, be careful when passing that up. Dave Alicia, back to you. Thank you, sir. We'll get back to you on that in just a few minutes. The new strain of coronavirus first detected in the UK is now spreading here in the US. The first US case was in Colorado, and now a case has also been identified in California. CNN's Reed Bignon reports. Well, Governor, first of all, I'm not surprised that you have a a case and likely more cases. Dr. Anthony Fauci and California Governor Gavin Newsom discussing the arrival of the new coronavirus variant in yet another U.S. state. This new variant, this new strain uh, that we've identified, obviously, from the United Kingdom, other, some other parts of the globe identified in Colorado yesterday has been identified here. The new strain identified Wednesday in a 30 year old San Diego man. Health officials said he is not hospitalized and had very few social interactions during the potential contagious period. I don't think that the Californians should feel that this is something odd. This is something that's expected and we likely will be seeing reports from other states. Health experts say the UK strain may be more contagious, but it doesn't appear to be more deadly. Also, health experts say current vaccines will likely protect against the new variant. The first known case of the new strain in the US was discovered in Colorado Tuesday. News broke on Wednesday that Colorado health officials identified what they believe to be a second case in that state. I'm Reed Binion reporting. In the meantime, President Donald Trump planning to leave a Mar-a-Lago sooner than expected. The early departure means he's going to miss the annual New Year's Eve party at his Florida resort. The president's return to Washington comes before Congress is set to certify President-elect Joe Biden's election victory next week. The president reportedly sees that as an opportunity to try to overturn the results, even though the certification is mostly a formality. The president has also commented he is worried Iran could retaliate for the drone strike he ordered a year ago that killed the nation's top general, Qasim Soleimani. And the Transportation Security Administration says more than a million people went through airport security checkpoints for the fourth day in a row on Tuesday. Also, Checkpoint traffic exceeded a million people in eight of the last 12 days. Sunday was the single busiest day of the pandemic. That's when nearly 1.3 million people got screened. The spike in pandemic era travel raises public health concerns. The lowest point in the pandemic was on April 14th. About 87,000 people flew in the U.S. that day. 537, 42 degrees. Very cold. Oatmeal cream pies for breakfast. Oh man, we'll tell you about a new cereal featuring a fan favorite snack from Little Debbie. And we were talking about traveling. Many are looking forward to traveling again, but you may be required to bring proof of a negative COVID test or vaccination when you decide to get away. And taking a look at live cam, pretty Ooh, muggy. It's getting nastier. Yeah. That's some, like rain on the, on the lens. Yeah. yeah. Messing things up. Be careful as you're headed out this morning because the roads are going to be a little slick with all that rain. Mike's Sketch Forecast coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. We're 20 minutes away from 6 o'clock. If you are feeling cooped up after months and months of this pandemic, don't worry, you're not alone. Many are looking forward to traveling again, but you may be required to bring proof of vaccination when you want to get away. CNN's Mandy Geither explains. As coronavirus vaccines continue to roll out worldwide, you may be itching to get out or travel. With that in mind, smartphone apps like Common Pass are being created, which allows users to upload a COVID-19 test result or eventually proof of vaccination. It generates a QR code that can be scanned to get into stadiums, movie theaters, even other countries without revealing sensitive information. When traveling, the user can also check the app to see COVID-19 rules based on their itinerary. 
IBM has also developed an app called Digital Health Pass, which allows companies and venues to customize what they'd need for entry, including COVID-19 tests, temperature checks, and vaccination records. Those would be stored on a mobile wallet. For those without a smartphone, a few companies are also working on a smart cart that strikes a middle ground between traditional paper vaccine certificates and an online version that's easier to store and reproduce. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Did a good job, it's 542 and 42 degrees. And next, Kwanzaa is going on right now. We'll tell you more about this seven day holiday that's observed here in the U.S. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union. From all of us at RBFCU, we want to wish our veterans and service members stationed across the world a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays! Yeah! Welcome back, 545. Christmas might be over, but Kwanzaa is going on right now. It's a seven-day non-religious holiday observed in the U.S. meant to honor African Americans' ancestral roots. The celebration lasts until tomorrow. As our Max Massey explains, the name comes from the Sawali phrase that translates to first fruits. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by a black nationalist and professor of Pan-African Studies at California State University at Long Beach. Kwanzaa became popular in the 1980s and the 1990s in tandem with the Black Power Movement, making up the trio of winter holidays along with Hanukkah and Christmas. Now, the holiday is defined by seven principles. Each day of the festival is dedicated to a specific principle, marked by lighting a new candle on the seven-branch candelabra. Now, the seven principles translate to unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. According to USA Today, this year, institutions like the National Museum of African American History and Culture will actually be providing digital resources for communities that way that they can celebrate at home. Now, some of the stuff included are recipes, music, and even activities for the kids. Guys, back to you. In your morning consumer headlines, Papa John's is planning to provide bonuses to 14,000 frontline workers for their hard work during the pandemic. The Pizza Giant is allocating around $2.5 million to the special year in bonuses. In addition, Papa John's has also hired 30,000 new team members this year, many who had lost their previous jobs due to the pandemic. The Pizza Chain has contributed more than $3.6 million to COVID-19 relief efforts. It has also donated more than 500,000 pizzas to, to essential healthcare workers, first responders, and communities in need. America's number one selling snack cake is coming soon to a cereal bowl near you. Kellogg's collaborating with Little Debbie to turn the famous oatmeal cream pie into a new breakfast treat. The Little Debbie cereal features crispy oatmeal puffs with a cream coating. The new oatmeal cookie cereal also honors the iconic snack's 60th anniversary. While you could always have a Little Debbie snack for breakfast before, this at least makes it a bit more socially acceptable. What? I didn't know you. I didn't know it had to be socially acceptable. Have a little Debbie snack cake for breakfast. Oh, so you would try it? Sure. Why not? You would try it too, Mike. Some would milk? you try the cereal? I, it seems like it's going to be on the sweet side. Very. Well, very. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, why not just have a little Debbie? Like Fruit Loops aren't sweet. Uh, come on. True. Yeah, but an, like an oatmeal cookie. <laughs> hey, so we got a couple of problems out there on the roadways, Officer Solis. Yeah, Dave. Right now, so that that. Accident there on Culebra and 410. What was an accident? It looks like a stalled vehicle, but it's since cleared up. So good news there. Looks like uh, access road of Culebra at 410 is flowing smoothly. Just remember this hazard ice on the roadway there going west on I-10 past Bernie into Comfort and Kerrville. Transguide still has these uh, caution signs up, so please be careful when driving that way. Let's go straight to the Transguide here. 410 at Culebra where that traffic related was now cleared up, but everywhere around the city still a little slick. Traffic flowing smoothly. 1604 Bandera, US 281 at San Pedro and 10 at the Y looking good, but you can see there on the roadways, things are very slick. Be careful. Seatbelt, two inches of the steering wheel, go that speed limit. All right, Nick, and uh, today is kind of a sad day for us here on the Good Morning San Antonio show in case that 12 is going to be Nick's last broadcast 
doing all these traffic reports for us, and we're gonna have some pictures of Nick coming up in just a few minutes. Oh, here's oh, that smile. Oh, yeah. Look at that yeah. one that, that we yeah. love. Oh, they get better. Oh, man. Oh, hey, they it's they get me better. Marcus. That was, our first, that was my first day. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. over a year ago, and there's yeah. your beautiful family, which is gonna be oh. added too, correct? Yeah, they're the boys, they're the boys, and oh, that was the first time they ever saw the police car there, so oh. that was pretty cool. Love and you, and you've got a little one coming? Oh yeah, daughter, Lilia. Lilia's coming March 8th, so. Man, three, three, yeah, three. Yeah, little girl, little girl. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. Beautiful one. wife, Ashton. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> was that little Debbie? That was a dope. <laughs> that was uh, There I am in the police choir there, so singing this. Oh, you're game. in the police choir? Yeah, police choir. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's one of the talents you brought. Was yeah. Your singing ability, right? Yeah, I could, I, I, I could carry a small tune, Dave. A small tune. Small tune. Yeah. <laughs> I remember in the Christmas party last year. You're really good. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. And I'm not sure it. there's not a bigger cowboy First, stand in the building. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's why the son's little middle name is Dad. Dallas for the uh, How cool. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Elisa. Back, uh, first one to grab the microphone in the uh, karaoke machine was Nick last yeah. uh, year at the Christmas party. So, anyway. <laughs> Well, first off, thank you for your yes. service here at KZ12, keeping all our viewers informed on the traffic. And of course, thank you for your service, which I know you'll continue uh, on the streets of San Antonio as a police officer. Appreciate that. Man, I appreciate that, Dave. Thank you right. so much, man. Indeed. And thanks just for being a good good friend over the past year, pal. Yeah. All right, here's what it looks like outside. Not much is showing up right now. Uh, a couple of drops on the lens, but there is a lot of rain. As you saw in the uh, trans guide cameras that Nick was showing, it is raining pretty good in parts of town. And as you can see, all of this rain continues to work its way up to the north. And we've got another big batch moving in there from uh, Frio, Atascosa County, and in western, excuse me, in eastern Medina County, and even a few thunderstorms that are thrown in as well. So we'll continue to see that throughout the rest of the morning. So if you're you're getting ready to head on out, even if, though it may not be raining right where you are. Again, this rain is coming if you're going to head out here in town, heading off to work today. Now, as uh, we were talking about heading out toward the hill country, and Nick was talking about those uh, the signs that uh, the highway has put out, the highway department has put out just to alert of potential icing, but also it's kind of a uh, here's what's to come situation because things will start to get a little icier as and a little more wintry precipitation as the afternoon rolls on. We've got a little bit of sleet showing up right now. Some of this pink showing up with some of this rain, but of course ground temperatures the ground is still very, very warm, so nothing's really going to be accumulating on the ground. Now elevated surfaces as temperatures flirt with freezing, maybe a little bit of just different situation, hence the reason for those uh, those signs out there. Not much right now uh, in northern portions of Edwards as well as Valverde County, but that's going to be changing. Once again, temperatures and that's just those particular thermometers. In the outlying areas, it may be below freezing, 34 at Fredericksburg, so could be a little bit uh, right around freezing and freezing right now in Rock Springs. So just got to it's it's always that that fine line that we're dealing with around here when it comes to wintry precipitation. So that's what you got to watch out for. So here's the uh, computer model. And again, as the day rolls on, most of everything is going to be in the form of rain. Then it starts to change over a bit more to some snow as well as a little bit of uh, sleep mixed on in there. And yeah, maybe into uh, eastern portions of uh, Kerr County, there is that chance. But then this model gets everything out of here by about uh, say midnight. And then we're going to start to clear out overnight. Two to five inches of snow is possible. Northern portions of uh, Edwards County into Valverde County, maybe a little bit of uh, some mixed further to the east, but it shouldn't be anything really accumulating just because, like I said, the, the ground is on the warmer side, even though air temperatures have been dropping down. 42 degrees today at noon, rain, and then starting to change over more into a little bit of sleet and snow well out to the west. 44 here in town, that's going to be about it, and temperatures will be flirting with freezing well out in western parts of the uh, hill country. And then we're going to be clearing out tonight down to 34, but the wind's still going to be kicking up there, so it's going to be a breezy wind chill start to 2021. Beautiful day, beautiful weekend as well. So math was never the strong suit, but yeah. I'm guessing 42 now, only 44, only a couple of degrees is going to go up today. That's yeah. it. Tem yeah, temperatures are basically going to stay steady or like I said, out to the west, they are going to be dropping down just a, a little bit. So that's why when things kind of are helping to change over into sleet as well as a little bit of snow. So it's not as bad right now, but as the day goes on out to the west, things are going to be more wintry. Got a warm coat. And a scarf. And a scarf. Today's the perfect day. Boots. Time right now, 553, 42 degrees. It's going to be like that all day. Here's some lottery numbers for you.
pick three. Mike, here we go. One, four, two. Fireball is four. Your daily four is four, eight, seven, five. Fireball is four. And cash okay. five? Cash five. 10, 11, 12, 20, and 34. And Lotto Texas is one, four, 13, 16, 21, 28. And Powerball, no one. Somebody won. What, what did he say? What? Uh, somebody won some money on Powerball. 50,000 in Powerball, but, but the big. But the big winner didn't happen. So it's what, 384 million. Woo! 343, 45, 61, 65. Powerball 14. Power play was two. So play again. It's 557. Don't forget, time's running out to enjoy a magical drive through experience brought to you by our KSAC community partners. Even though the holidays are wrapping up, you and the family can still enjoy a mile-long light display that surrounds the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd. To find out ticket prices and times available, just head over to KSAC.com. Hey, covering the news of 2020 has not been easy for journalists, but on GMSA at 9, we found a way to bring fun and laughter to everyone in an educational way with Katie's Science Lab. Coming up today at 9 o'clock, we take a look back at some of the best moments. You don't want to miss it. Hey, a new study shows the mass of human weight material now outweighs the Earth's biomass for the first time ever. Coming up on our next hour of GMSA, we'll tell you what that means and what man-made material is weighing so much. And as we head to break, look at the roads, you can see there's moisture on the cameras, which means there's moisture on the roads, which means they're slick. So be careful if you're headed out this morning. Nick Solis will be back with your traffic. Mike's got your weather. We've got more news coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. A driver in custody after leading Castle Hills police on a chase. We've got the details on what police say happened. And the CDC has released a new projection of the numbers of deaths related to COVID-19. Those numbers still ahead. And outside with live cam, it's cold, it's wet, it's windy, and it's not going to get much better throughout the day. Mike Sketch forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and good riddance to December 31st. <laughs> it is New Year's Eve. It's almost over. Yeah, thank you for starting your morning with us. We're excited to be here. Ooh, yeah. Pretty exciting weather-wise. If you like winter weather, welcome to it. Yeah, especially, uh, well, out in the hill country, and then especially as the day rolls on later on today when it's really going to start to pick up. There's a little bit of mix out there uh, heading in toward the hill country right now, but it, but it will start to pick up and boy you step outside this morning and get ready because it's just wet and cold and windy and it sneaks down the back of your neck. It's that kind of cold out there. Not much showing up in this picture right now, but we've got a bunch of rain around the area and even though it's not uh, like I said anything showing up in that picture right now, obviously a lot of rain is moving on in and as you can see there's uh, some thunderstorms thrown in there as well. So just this is how it's going to be pretty much all day long. We'll have showers, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms, a couple of decent downpours as well. Now go out toward the hill country and yep, that is some pink thrown in there as you go out I-10 uh, just right there in the far left hand corner of Gillespie County, maybe a little bit of uh, sleep thrown in and a little bit more going into western parts of Kerr County and Edwards County. Uh, the temperatures are still just flirting right around freezing or just above that and the ground is warm from the past couple of days so nothing is really sticking but just kind of watch it especially on the road heading on out there and then especially going into this afternoon as we start to see more of that wintry precipitation. There is a winter storm warning in effect for Western Kerr County and then Edwards, uh, Real, as well as Valverde County for later on today. Maybe a couple of inches, uh, two to four inches of snow accumulation when it's all said and done. Northern Edwards and then in toward Valverde County. A uh, little bit of uh, some mixed precipitation as I call it chunky rain, some sleep mixed in with some of the rain in parts of Gillespie County. But again, this is heading out in toward the hill country and then um, further out north of our viewing area, north and west of our viewing area. Here's the temperatures right now, 41, but it's a cold 41 degrees here. And again, 36 at the reporting stations, but then again, in the outlying areas could be actually 
a little bit closer to freezing. So that's just something to keep in mind here in town. I think we may drop down another degree or so, and the wind is going to be uh, out of the northwest about 15, 25 miles per hour, maybe easing up a little bit later on today. Only make it up back up to 42 at noon, and we may get back up to 44 degrees later on today, but it's just going to stay cold and wet and windy all day long. We will be clearing out tonight. 2021 is going to start off fantastic, sunny and chilly. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and off. Officer Nick Solis and well, just looking at the map, uh, don't see a lot going on. Not a lot going on, Mike, but we just got a, a major accident right now on 35 and Ben's Engelman. So let's get right to it here. Looks like it's coming in between at t Center Parkway, Splashtown right there uh, northeast side. So look, and just on cue, traffic starting to build up there at the moment. All right, remember hazard ice on the roadway going westbound I-10 in the hill country past comfort going into Kerrville right now. Those caution sides put up by Transguide still there. Please be careful when driving there due to the ice. Okay, this is the accident 35 at Ben's Engelman on those northbound lanes that's causing traffic buildup already. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Drive safely and be careful. And uh, just get to work safely. Dave? Thank you, Officer Solis. New this morning, a woman recovering after she had to be rescued from her vehicle after crashing on the city's far west side. It happened around 1130 last night in the 4400 block of Rogers Road. That's near Highway 151. Police say the woman was driving a small SUV when she lost control, rode over, and then got trapped inside. Firefighters were able to get her out of the vehicle. She was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Also new this morning, a driver is in custody after sending police officers on a high speed chase overnight. It happened in Castle Hills at Loop 410 near I-10 and Hubner just after midnight. Castle Hills police say they were trying to stop the reckless driver when that suspect just took off. Police tell us he reached speeds over 120 miles per hour before he finally pulled over. That driver was detained for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. And a San Antonio woman says a fire forced her family out of their home just one day after Christmas. The fire happened off of Soralvo Street last Saturday. Veronica Castro says parts of her family's home destroyed most of their belongings, including their children's school laptops, along with their dog, now gone. Castro says their home is beyond repair and never imagined her children would have to face this kind of devastation. It's just overwhelming. It's, it's, it's hard to comprehend. The only thing I can do is comfort them the best I can as a mom. According to the San Antonio Fire Department, someone who was passing by noticed smoke coming from the back of the house. That person notified everybody inside. They were all able to get out safely. The cause is still not known. And the CDC is now projecting up to 424,000 COVID-19 deaths by January 23rd here in the U.S. This is about 5,000 more people than what the CDC projected earlier. So far, the pandemic has claimed the lives of more than 341,000 Americans. On Tuesday, more than 3,700 deaths linked to the virus were reported, which is a new high for the country. And turning to coronavirus here in Bear County with the latest numbers, San Antonio Mayor Ron, Berg, Ron Nirenberg telling us that 1,323 new cases. City health officials also reporting 17 people who have died from the virus. In addition, 1,136 people are in local hospitals with 331 in the ICU and 165 on ventilators. Our seven-day moving average of cases is now 1,121. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf rolled up his sleeve to get his first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. Wolf, who is in phase 1B due to his age, took the dose of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine at University Health alongside his wife. He will get his second shot on January 20th. And after the injection yesterday, Wolf explained he wanted to take the shot in part to demonstrate to the community it's safe and effective. There are many things we wish to say goodbye to in 2020. Road construction, not one of them. Several projects will resume or start in the new year. Our Samuel King joins us live now. Samuel, you have a look at some of those. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of activity here coming up in the next few weeks after this holiday break, guys. And that includes continued construction on I-35 and New Braunfels and many other projects. But we'll start with some good news uh, first, and that's on the north side, the 281 project that's been going on. The HOV lanes between Stone Oak Parkway and Loop 1604 are set to open later this uh, later next year in 2021. I have to start saying next next year for one more day. 
day. Uh, meanwhile, the ramp at uh, 281 here between 1604 uh, is going to be opening soon. Some of them are already opening, but we're told by TxDOT that the rest of them are going to be opening here soon, so that'll be something good. And while that project is making progress, another one is just beginning, and that's McCullough Avenue between Oblate and Shannon Lee. It'll be closed for a few months. Uh, the bridge will be closed to repair some storm drains in the area. It's all part of a 2017 bond project to address some flooding issues in the area. And that project means some detour for VIA's Route 5 bus for the next several months. VIA is also making some other service adjustments, uh, adjustments effective January 11th. It's increasing frequency on some routes to adjust for changing demand and to reduce crowding. That allows for better social distancing on board. That includes the Primo Route 103 on Zarzamora and the Route 552 route on Loop 410. So if you missed all of that, we'll have more on KSAT.com coming up a little later this morning. And of course, in a new year, we'll be here to walk you through it all uh, every morning here on GMSA. David? All right, Samuel, thank you very much. The Shirts Police Department is raising awareness about the dangers of showcasing too much information with bumper stickers on the back of your vehicles. Some bumper stickers that fall into that category of giving criminals a view into your personal life include specific decals like information about your military spouse, what kind of dog you have at home, and how many children you have, or even the name of the school where your child goes to. Special Projects Officer Anna Kraft says it's okay to be proud of your family's accomplishments. However, she says it's better to be safe than sorry. But back in those days, I don't think we had to worry about it too much. But as times have changed, we want to bring out the awareness that we may want to get out of our old habits and start paying attention. Yeah, she says bumper stickers that wouldn't risk a criminal committing a crime include those that are nonspecific. So it's okay to say your child is doing well in school without mentioning the name of the school. Kraft says the decision is yours, but she encourages everyone just be careful and be aware of their surroundings. It's 610 and 41 degrees. And a designer has come pretty close to create a device that will help him to fly into the air. The details still head on GMSA. Important news if you're planning to drink as you ring in the new year. Next on GMSA, we share some tips on how to help your hangover. And taking a live look outside with live cam. You can't see it, but you can definitely feel it. 41 degrees out there. It's a cold morning. Bundle up, a coat, a scarf, a mitten. We'll be back. Welcome back with New Year's Eve fast approaching. It's a good time to remind you, you can have too much fun and it can lead to a very Ooh. painful next day. Hangovers can cause vomiting, sweating, headaches, nausea, dehydration, and a lot more. But are there ways to help ease the discomfort? Erica Hernandez has a story. Tis the season for a little champagne, but the morning after can be anything but fun. Headache. Throwing up, nausea, yeah. And just lethargic, don't, don't want to do anything. Science says to hydrate with water and electrolyte supplement. Consuming around four alcoholic drinks can eliminate up to 33 ounces of water from your body. Eating a good breakfast can also normalize your blood sugar levels, which can lessen your discomfort. One study found red ginseng reduced blood alcohol levels and hangover severity. Prickly pear extract decreased symptoms and cut the risk of hangover severity in half. And there's some evidence that ginger combined with brown sugar and tangerine extract could improve symptoms. But the one thing not to do? Not drink any water or eat anything. Another trick to skip is drinking during a hangover. It can be dangerous. Your vital organs, like your liver, need time to repair. Erica Fernandez, Case at 12 News. Most experts recommend that you should avoid alcohol for at least 48 hours after heavy drinking. Interesting, interestingly, darker hued drinks such as bourbon, red wine and rum are more likely to cause a hangover because of what they contain. So they have higher concentrations of some compounds. So yeah. stay away from those. Interesting. You know, or you can solve the problem. Just don't drink too much. Yeah, just drink some water. There you go. Or the Welch's sparkling juice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 
<laughs> Jim, well, see, there's, a, there's an easy way around everything. Yes, there is. There's All an right. easy way around this. Yeah, I know. Right now, Dave, the roadways are looking a little difficult here. So we have a lot of good traffic flow everywhere. But if we t hit another graphic here, you're going to see this means that the roadways are wet right now, especially here heavy in the downtown area. We got some ponding there. So just keep in mind, roadways are dangerous when driving very slick right now. That's all the water there. So please be careful. All right. Major accident northbound I-35 at Ben's Engelman Road right now. Uh, this accident still active. Let's go straight to it. And then we have the hazard ice on the roadway still going westbound on I-10 towards Kerrville in the hill country. Please be careful when driving that direction. But here's the accident 35 at Ben's Engelman right now in those northbound lanes causing a little bit of traffic buildup. Please be careful when passing this way uh, as you know with emergency lights and the reflection of the water on the roadway. It gets very dangerous to see how close those cars are in front of you. Good advice, sir. Oh, very good. So it's wet out there. It's cold. It's windy. cold and it's windy and oh. it's going to stay this way pretty much all day long. So, you know, there's a lot of people going to wake up this morning, walk out the yard and find their buckets and yard ornaments and yeah. chairs. Yeah, this morning uh, oh, as I was place. getting ready, as I was looking out the window going, are the yeah, Christmas decorations still on the house? Because <laughs> it was windy overnight. Uh, late yesterday, it was windy as well. Now, temperatures around the area, most everybody is well up in the 40s, got some 30s, and then notice how Rock Springs is right now just at freezing, and temperatures are going to be close to that throughout the rest of today. We're at uh, dew points 37, so relative to the temperature, there's a lot of humidity, and that's why along with all that uh, in the rain out there. It's kind of that damp chill. Got a good breeze out there as well. So that gives us a, a wind chill to deal with. This is what it looks like on live cam right now. And uh, we just saw some rain earlier. Nothing showing up as of right now, but a lot on radar. And notice how it kind of comes in waves. So we've got another batch of some showers, even some thunderstorms. That's what we've been dealing with. Despite the fact this front moved through here, we still have some of these uh, thunderstorms because there's a lot of lift in the atmosphere right now. So it may be tapering off for the moment here in town after that one batch of rain moved through, but more is definitely on the way. We've got a couple of thunderstorms over here around uh, Medina Lake out in the hill country. Notice how things for the time being have kind of settled down there in uh, Valverde as well as Edwards County, but we do have a little bit of mixed precipitation, uh, maybe a little bit of sleet thrown in. If you're heading out I-10 into the northwest portions and northern portions of Kerr County past Kerrville, and that's going to continue to be the case, kind of some of that, that mixed precipitation out there, and then more of it's going to be turning over into snow as the, the afternoon rolls on. So throughout the morning, we continue with rain around here. It's still going to be on the windy side, and then notice how by late in the afternoon, it really starts to turn over into some snow and at least that computer model has it kind of sticking around through about mid evening. Then we're going to start to clear on out overnight and that's the good start to 2021. Nice and cold tomorrow morning, sunshine throughout the day and only staying in the 50s though. Two to five inches of snow is going to be possible. Northern parts of Edwards, uh, Valverde counties, maybe a little bit uh, some traces here and there. Uh, Real, parts of Kerr County and then also into uh, parts of uh, Gillespie County. The reason why the snow is going to continue to develop is we've got this low out here and you can almost see a little bit of a counterclockwise rotation that's going to be working its way across western part of the state and western part of our viewing area. And so that's what is going to then it's a cold pocket of air and that's what's going to enhance the snow chances as the the day rolls on today. Pretty much temperatures aren't going anywhere. We're at 41 right now, may drop a degree or two and then go up a degree or two throughout the rest of the day. That'll be about it. So it's just going to stay windy, wet, and that snow will continue to develop out to the west. And again, going out toward the hill country or even up uh, north, far north on 281, up in toward northern uh, Blanco County, way up there, there could be a little bit of uh, kind of some sleep mixed in with some of the rain. There is the winter storm warning in effect for western Kerr and then going into Real, Edwards, Valverde County, up through midnight, and then Gillespie County has the uh, winter weather advisory posted. Like I said, tomorrow's going to be fantastic. We just got to make it through today. Wet, cold, that snow off to the uh, west later on today developing and uh, then freezing. It looks like by Saturday morning here in town, but good, good weekend. Good looking weekend. Good start to the new year. Just make it through the day. Actually, right. I actually have a question for you. So right now when you were talking about the temperatures and it's going to stay like that, I totally forgot to bring in my plants last night. Do those run a risk now? Is it too late? It, it's going to be really close to it again. You know, okay. we're talking 34 degrees. So in your oh, backyard, man. it may be close to freezing. I mean, this morning, though, you're talking about? Yeah. No, it's going to be fine this morning. OK. Yeah, it's oh. tonight then. Yeah. Run back home. Bring, bring them in tonight. <laughs> 621 and 41 degrees.
And the woman who falsely accused a teenage boy of stealing her phone in New York City in a New York City hotel is speaking out. A preview next on GMA, say, GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. The new MyWW Plus gives you more of what you need to help you lose weight. More simplicity with what's in your fridge, which suggests meals based on what you have. More motivation with on-demand workout classes. More freedom with over 300 zero-point foods. And new tools to boost your mood and help keep you hydrated. Get more of what you need to help you lose weight. The new MyWW Plus, more holistic, more personalized, more weight loss. WW Weight Watchers Reimagined. Lose weight on us this winter. Get three months free. Ends January 4th. Well, I know one thing. I love my house. It's just home, and I love it. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love. It's staying safe. It's essential. If your loved one needs in-home care, we're here to help. Home Instead. To us, it's personal. In this morning's GMA First Look, the family of Keon Harold Jr. is speaking out against claims from the woman seen on video accusing the 14-year-old of theft. This is my phone. Show me. No. You don't have to explain nothing to her. Get the face off. That's mine. You really can get it back. Are you kidding me? You feel like there's only one iPhone made in the world? In this newly released surveillance video, you can see the woman wrestle with Keon Jr. in the lobby, tackling him to the ground. Her phone was brought to her in an Uber. There's nothing to say to her, but look at the video. On Wednesday, police say following a review of the video at the Arlo Hotel in downtown Manhattan, they're considering additional possible charges for the unnamed woman, including assault, grand larceny, and attempted robbery. And coming up at 7 a.m., the new details from the unreleased phone interview, the unnamed woman speaking out for the first time. With your GMA First Look, I'm Adrian Bankert, ABC News. Amazon buying the podcasting startup Wondery for an undisclosed amount of money. The move is seen as an attempt to better compete in the podcasting market with Apple and Spotify. Wondery counts over 10 million unique listeners per month. And a designer has built his own grappling hook gun that would make any superhero jealous, including me. It fits on one arm, uses carbon dioxide cartridges to shoot the hook, and has a 10,000 watt motor to pull him up in the air. He says his next project is a web shooter like Spider-Man's. It's one of those situations that happens on the sidelines and did last night and it gave way to a history making moment for the San Antonio Spurs. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, you want to start with LeBron James. He got to suit up last night, even though he was listed with a sprained ankle in the first three games the next five days against the Spurs. James helps put the Lakers up by 13 in the second. Meanwhile, right before halftime, DeMar DeRozan, there's James. That's got him in there. All right, so right before halftime, DeMar DeRozan is going to drive to the hoop and going to get mugged. Look at that. Knocked all over the place. Pop jumps off the bench, starts yelling at the referee. Two technicals, and Pop is gone. Yep, got ejected last night. Here's a play again. That leads to this big moment. Becky Hammond is now the head coach on the sidelines, the first in NBA history and in all North American sports. She led the team as DeJounte Murray scored a career-high 29 points and kept the Spurs close in the fourth. DeMar contributed 23 as well. The Lakers were able to pull away, though, and win it 121 to 107. So congratulations to Becky Hammond. Next, it is a rematch with the Lakers coming up tomorrow night on New Year's night. Tip off for that one will be earlier than normal. Usually they're 7.30. Tomorrow night's going to be at 7 o'clock. But once again, Becky Hammond taking over on the sidelines as awesome. the acting head coach of the Spurs after Pop gets tossed out. So congratulations to her. Well-deserved honor and all the accolades she's getting today and all the praise she's getting today. Very well-deserved. It's important. Good congrats yeah, it to her. Time right now, 6.28 and it's a cold 41 degrees. 
The mass of human weight material now outweighs the Earth's biomass. What experts are saying is the cause. Coming up in our next half hour. And next, new details about that second confirmed case of the UK coronavirus variant discovered here at home. And take a look at the roads with TransGuy. You can see we've got some problems right there at 35 and Ben Zegelman, Officer Solis will have a wrap up on that for you coming up and let you know if there's anything else you need to worry about if you're headed out this morning. Small Bear County cities struggle to spend CARES Act funding. The details on how much fund was given and how much was actually spent. I'm ABC's Avery Harper. A second case of that more contagious variant of COVID-19 from the UK has been found here at home. I'll have the latest coming up. And outside with live cam. You can't really tell it unless you look down in the corner right there where it says 41 degrees. And those are clouds with some moisture in them and it's all over the street. And it's in the air and the wind is blowing and your stuff is down the street if you left it outside. So Man, I would like to be the, the neighbor that lives at the end of the street downwind and you kind of walk outside. You're like the collection site. All the stuff is blown down the street into your yard <laughs> and you got to separate it and figure out who belongs to what. And Exactly. <laughs> Just put up flyers around there and come on down <laughs> and do a little shopping. So, uh, you know, 41 <laughs> degrees, though, the normal low is 40. So we're right basically where we should be. But then you factor in the wind and the rain and it's that damp, cold and wind chills to deal with. And speaking of damp, boy, there is a lot of rain out there. And notice we've got a fair amount of uh, some lightning strikes being detected as well. We just had sort of a bit of a break in the action here in town. And now another good batch of rain is getting ready to slide on through here and that extends down in toward Floresville. You're getting some pretty good downpours as well. It is moving at a fairly good clip, so it's not as though any of these things are just sitting in one spot. But again, you're going to get some uh, some pretty good downpours and we picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain officially out at the airport yesterday and as of last count about a tenth of an inch or so, but obviously that's going to continue to get added to um, a lot of orange, red, yellow, green and then some pink thrown in there out in western uh, Kerr County, Gillespie County, also in uh, North Northern Real County and that's a little bit of some sleet mixed in with some of this rain. The ground is warm enough so it's not going to be accumulating there um, with temperatures kind of flirting around freezing as you head out to the west. You got to kind of watch uh, watch things on maybe some of the elevated uh, roadways as you head on out I-10 out to the west. And then as the day rolls on, we're going to start to see more of that precipitation change over into some sleet as well as some snow. And so that's why the winter storm warning is in effect for western Kerr County, Real, Edwards, Valverde County. Most of the snow is going to be uh, about, say, anywhere from two to five inches northern Edwards into uh, Valverde counties. And then you have some of this mixed precipitation, uh, some Kerr County, Gillespie County, maybe even a little bit around Bandera, some sleet mixed in with some of the rain. Again, temperatures right now are above freezing. We do have wind chills to deal with, but again, it's close to it out there in the hill country, so it's going to be a real close call. Wind chill temperatures, 30s, some 20s. That's going to be the case all day long. Rain, windy, some snow or wintry stuff out to the west this morning. Not a lot of it, but then as the day goes on, it's definitely going to start to pick up that snow out to the west. And we'll continue with the rain and windy conditions and then going into tonight. Rain is going to be ending here in town. It'll still be, have, we'll still have some of the snow sticking around out to the west through about mid evening. Then that will continue to uh, kind of come to an end and we'll clear out. And then that's going to set us up for a really good start. Good looking start, nice and cold. Good start to 2021. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. If you are heading out, I would assume your advice, Officer Solis, is take your time. Take your time, Mike. Go to the speed limit, two hands on the steering wheel and seatbelt because it is dangerous out there. Roadways are very slick. Now, traffic is flowing smoothly all around the city, but it is very dangerous to be on the roadway right now. All right, we have another major accident here. It's IH10 at North Foster Road. Can't confirm right now whether it's east or westbound. Just know it's somewhere, a one vehicle accident somewhere in this vicinity um, there. I'll get you more details on it when I can. All right, remember, high, uh, hazard ice on the roadway. Westbound I-10 in the Hill Country past Comfort into Kerrville right now. Duran's Guide still has those signs up for ice there. Please be careful when you are heading in that direction. All right, inbound traffic times. Here we go Bolverde. You're coming southbound on 281 from the city Bolverde to San Antonio. You got a 29 minute ride. If you're coming eastbound from Lavernia on 87, only 24 minutes. Not bad there. And taking a look outside 35 at 410. Roadway is slick, very slick, but traffic is flowing smoothly. Dave, Alicia, back to you.
Thank you, sir. Congress has extended the deadline for CARES Act funds to be spent to December 30th of next year. Government agencies have been rushing to try to find ways to spend the funds. Bear County made $9 million available to 26 cities and municipalities. Only about $4.4 million were spent, according to Judge Nelson Wolf. The rest of the funds were reallocated to support programs and businesses during the pandemic. Some towns didn't use one cent of the money allocated to them. Others only spent a little bit of it. Converse spent more than 90% of the funds budgeted, says Mayor Al Suarez. They purchased three ambulances, renovated council chambers to meet social distancing guidelines, and bought cleaning equipment. He says the process to coordinate the grant application and deadlines was not easy. A lot of times it's a lot of work. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. Getting these three uh, ambulances, if you would only to see what happened behind the scenes, it couldn't have been done if it wasn't for the team or the team effort. St. Hedwig, Von Army, Gray Forest didn't use one cent of their federal funds allotted. One mayor told us they didn't have the upfront money needed to make large purchases that would have been later reimbursed by the county grant. Others said they lacked the staff needed to coordinate the deadlines. This morning, new details about the second confirmed case of the UK coronavirus variant discovered here at home as the number of deaths and hospitalization continues to climb. More than 342,000 people have died, according to Johns Hopkins. 125,000 plus hospitalized from the COVID tracking project. ABC's Avery Harper with the latest in Washington, plus the new CDC warning on how high that death toll could go this time next month. The second confirmed case of the more contagious variant of COVID-19 has been found in Southern California's San Diego County. Health officials there trying to determine where the 30-year-old patient got it and how many more people could be infected. Because there is no travel history, uh, we believe this is not an isolated case. The first confirmed case discovered in Colorado and another suspected one found in members of the National Guard deployed to help a nursing home amid an outbreak of the coronavirus. We do not have evidence that the variant virus is circulating in that facility, um, but testing is ongoing. Health experts say the mutation isn't more deadly and vaccines should still be effective against it. But the pace of vaccinations is still far behind expectations. That number is lower than what we hoped for. The Trump administration pledged 20 million vaccinations by the end of the year. So far, only 14 million have been distributed and only two and a half million doses have been administered. The president blaming the states for the slow rollout, tweeting that they need to, quote, get moving. Los Angeles County marking more than 10,000 COVID-related deaths. This has been the toughest year of our city's history. The National Guard sending help for the coroner's office and funeral homes struggling to keep up with the influx of bodies. I have to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. And that's a very difficult thing to tell people. There are fears that the death toll will only worsen as we enter the new year. The CDC is predicting that deaths could reach 424,000 by January 23rd. Avery Harper, ABC News, Washington. It is now 639 and 41 degrees. Next on GMSA, why a study is saying the mass of human weight material now outweighs the Earth's biomass. Sarah Costa has the details. And welcome back. It is 643. The mass of human weight material now outweighs the Earth's biomass for the first time ever. That's according to a recent study. So what is the man-made material that's weighing so much? Sarah Acosta breaks down this weighty scientific study. Human production of materials such as plastic, asphalt, and metal now collectively outweigh every other living organism on Earth. A study from the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel estimates how human-made mass has changed from the year 1900 to present day. The results show that humans are doubling their mass imprint every 20 years. It also found that each of us adds more than our own body weight to the world each week. In 2020, we hit a new record. For the first time, human mass has hit about 1.1 trillion tons, exceeding the overall global biomass. Let's compare that to 1900, where human-made mass only equaled about 3% of the global biomass. As for the Earth's plant mass, the National Geographic believes humans have wiped out about half of it since the first agricultural revolution. All land and sea creatures weigh about 4 billion tons, and plastic alone amounts to 8 billion tons. 
Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. All right, it's 644, it's 41 degrees, the roads are wet, and there's been some accidents out there, so let's check in with Nick Solis and find out what's going on there. Yeah, Dave, dealing with some accidents there on the east side of town on I-10, so uh, let's get to it here. IH-10 at North Foster Road confirms it's actually the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Foster Road. One vehicle accident hit the barrier there, so please be careful. And then we'll have some e details of an accident on, I on 410 and 35 there on the northeast side, just can't confirm what part of 35 and 410 it is. All right, here we go. Hazard on the road, hazard, hazard ice on the roadway. You're going westbound I-10 right now in the hill country. We do have some ice there. A trans guide has those caution signs still up. Please be careful when driving in that direction. All right, some drive times right now. If you are going southbound from the city of New Braunfels to the city limits of San Antonio, only 27 minutes, so good news there. And 410 at Babcock, those roads look very slick. Please be careful. Go the speed limit and wear that seatbelt. All right, thank you, Nick. Before we go to the forecast, though, we do want to mention that today is Officer Nick Salise's last day here on Good Morning San Antonio, bringing us the traffic reports. It's a sad day. We didn't want him to have his last day here without a proper KSAT goodbye. Let's take a look at a classic video that we can't just not show. <laughs> Nick Salise, this video goes hands in hand. Take a look. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever take a bite of the donut? Uh, or you yeah, just I let did. it go. That donut is gone, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> let it, oh, let awesome it go down stuff. his throat there. So. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. <laughs> that's good. A lot of talent right there. A lot, a lot of talent. Oh, and you Dave. know what? That's how that's just how, how Nick is. I mean, he's yeah. always smiling. He is always just in a in a wonderful mood, except when the Cowboys lose. Uh, <laughs> even then he's still in a good mood. It's, it's just been such a pleasure being able to, to work with you for the past year. Hand in hand, buddy. Yeah, we knew Absolutely. this was a dream of yours when you were growing up just to be right here at, uh, at the KSS Studios delivering traffic. Yeah, I watched y'all growing up and uh, you watched you, Dave, on Instant Replay oh, Mike, with the weather. And it okay. was just, it was awesome to be here and to fulfill my dream of being on TV. And it's also awesome to be here, to stand, be the last officer here standing in, you know, with the legend of, of Detective Dart and Officer Trujillo and everything that they did for KSAT and to be here still standing um, you know, in memory of them, you know, their time here, it's an honor. And it's an honor to work with all of y'all here at KSET, and I really enjoyed my 14 months here. Well, and likewise, too. I mean, having, being able to work with you three guys and, you know, being getting a little bit closer to SAPD like that has been, has been fantastic. So, And we appreciate thank you, you, uh, you getting up early and coming in and delivering those traffic reports. And, of course, we appreciate what you do and your other job. And that's, uh, that's taking care of the community and keeping us all safe. So we thank you very much for your service on that. And God bless you and your entire family as you continue with that job. Beautiful I mean, wife, two boys, and little girl. Little girl on the way. What's her name going to be? Lilia. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. Well, you will be missed, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank much. you, Mike. I appreciate it. All right, as you're hitting the road this morning, as Nick was talking about, the roads are definitely wet. And uh, this is, you can see the wipers are going out there at 10, at 410, looking down toward the south. We've got a lot of rain continuing to come on in here, and uh, even a few thunderstorms that are thrown in as this continues to work its way up to the north. Um, decent downpours can be expected. They're not just sitting in one spot, though, so that's the good news. There might be a little bit of ponding in, in places. Notice how, though, going out I-10, we do have a little bit of some pinks showing up and there have been a, a little bit there even in eastern Kerr County so a little bit of sleet has been trying to mix in with some of this rain and more of this heading out uh, further on out to the west so you want to watch it and as Nick was talking about some of those signs out there uh, maybe a couple of slippery spots in the roads but also sort of a, uh, a warning as to what may come tonight as some of this changes over in toward more wintry type precipitation, but even further on out to the west, there's not a lot out there, even around Del Rio. Maybe a little bit of snow is trying to show up, but things are going to start to pick up as the uh, the day rolls on. Computer model, I think this does a fantastic job of showing what's going on. Most of this is going to be in the form of rain. Yeah, a little bit of uh, maybe some sleet mixed in in parts of the hill country heading out 10 western Kerr County this morning. But then notice how this starts to pick up out there around Edwards County, Valverde County, uh, Real 
and Kerr County, maybe even northern Uvalde. And that's going to be the situation then later on today as this cold pocket of air moves across. But then by midnight, that all pretty much gets on out of here and we will start to clear out overnight. Now, as far as snowfall potential, there is the chance for about two to five inches northern uh, Edwards and northern Valverde counties, maybe a little bit mixed in. Real, Kerr, Northwest Bandera, some uh, sleet mixed in as well. Accumulations would be further out to the west. And this is what I was talking about. Here's this low. You see that spin right there? It's a very, very cold pocket of air, and it's just going to be sliding up to the north to northeast. And so that's why, as that moves across the area, that's going to start to enhance the the changeover from rain to snow out there to the west, and that's going to be throughout the course of the day today. So the forecast goes like this. Temperatures pretty much aren't going to be moving, and actually out to the west may actually drop down somewhat. Rock Springs right now is at freezing, however, 42 degrees at noon. And then only 44 if we make it back up there. Snow, uh, rain, windy, snow out to the west. And then there is that uh, winter storm warning in effect for western Kerr County, Real, Edwards, Valverde, the uh, advisory for parts of Gillespie County. And that goes through midnight. Then overnight tonight, we clear on out. Cold start tomorrow. Beautiful sunshine to start off 2021. And freezing by Saturday morning as well. <laughs> Ooh, but it looks like winter. Yep. Looks like Feels like it too. too. Yeah, it's nice. All right, Mike, thanks. It is now 650, 41 degrees. And are we in the midst of a she session this Saturday on GMSA, how the COVID-19 pandemic is hurting women more than men? And once you get outside with the live cam, something's going to come up at some point. Well, no, never mind. Too much of that. I was hoping the sun would come up. It'll be rainy. up, but we just won't see it. Yeah, rainy and windy. In the news, you need to go need to know before you go. A driver is in custody after sending police officers on a high speed chase overnight. It happened in Castle Hills at Loop 410 near I-10 and Hubner just after midnight. Castle Hills police say they were trying to stop the reckless driver when that suspect took off. Police tell us he reached speeds over 120 miles per hour before he finally pulled over. That driver was detained for suspicion of driving while intoxicated. You know, covering the news in 2020 had been easy for a lot of journalists, but on GMSA at 9, we found a way to bring fun and laughter to everyone in an educational way with Katie's Science Lab. Coming up on GMSA at 9, we take a look back at some of the best moments. You don't want to miss it after Good Morning America. We tried to blow stuff up and had some like, <laughs> some like leakage all over the place, some really fun stuff, so you have to tune in and watch that one. All right, last check on traffic. Yeah, Dave, still dealing with this accident here, eastbound I-10 at North Boston Road. Keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction and taking a look outside Ford Tim at Bob Babcock. It's looking pretty good. I-10 at Woodstone looking good. 280 with Grayson traffic flowing. The roadways are wet. And Mike, you know what Fleetwood Max says, thunder only happens when it's raining. <laughs> Very good. I like that. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, obviously wet roads as Nick was talking about. This is 10 at 410 looking down to the south. It's pretty much the way it's going to be staying all day long. As you can see, we've got these waves of showers, even a few thunderstorms that are moving on through the area. A couple of heavier downpours. And then you head out toward the hill country. If you are going to be heading out toward the hill country later on today, watch it. This is a little bit of sleet mixed in, and then this is going to be changing over more to snow as the day rolls on. Western Kerr County out towards Edwards, Valverde. Um, Real counties, that's where the winter storm warning is in effect up until midnight. The advisory for Gillespie County, so it's pretty much the northwestern fringe of our viewing area. Um, but there's going to be some mixed precipitation. It could get a little slippery, like I said, if you're heading out 10 or maybe even uh, 90, but primarily heading out 10 to the, uh, the northwest. Temperatures, it is cold out there. It is windy, and it's going to stay this way throughout the rest of the day. Last broadcast for Officer Elise, and he's leaving us with a Fleetwood Mac reference. <laughs> Gotta love that. Happy New Year. GMA Happy is New next. Year. Happy New Year, everyone.